Hi everyone! The topic of this video will be about the bromination of stilbene. The materials used in this lab can cause irritation, therefore, remember to wear your goggles and gloves at all times. Halogenated alkanes are important building blocks for the synthesis of many important compounds. One method for synthesizing these important starting materials is the halogenation of an alkene. As shown here in the reaction scheme, these reactions are traditionally performed using elemental halogen reagents, which are either chlorine or bromine, with halogenated solvents such as dichloromethane or carbon tetrachloride, which are volatile, corrosive, and toxic. Extreme care must be taken when handling and disposing of this reagent. In this experiment, to avoid the direct use of this corrosive reagent, bromine will be generated in situ via the oxidation of aqueous hydrobromic acid using hydrogen peroxide. Concentrated hydrobromic acid and 30% hydrogen peroxide will both require careful handling and gloves should be worn at all times during their use. Both can damage and irritate skin and clothing. Additionally, this method generates water as a byproduct. Now let's get into the lab. Part A. Bromination of stilbene. Weigh approximately 0.5 grams of trans stilbene into a 100 milliliter round bottom flask. Record the actual mass of trans stilbene you use in your lab notebook. Add 10 milliliters of ethanol and a stir bar to the flask. You will then need to set up a reflux apparatus. Obtain a stand. Place a hot plate on top of the stand. Then, place a water bath on top of the hot plate. Put the flask inside the water bath. Clamp the flask into a stand. Make sure to submerge most of the flask in water. Fit a water-cooled reflux condenser on top of the reaction flask and clamp the condenser to the stand. Attach two water hoses to the condenser such that water will go in from the bottom and out from the top. Place a thermometer inside the water bath to monitor the temperature. You can clamp the thermometer to a stand to keep it straight. Here is the full reflux setup. Take a moment to pause if you need to sketch it down in your lab notebook. Once you finish your setup, heat the flask to reflux with stirring until most of the trans stilbene has dissolved. Using a 0.5 to 5 milliliter micro pipette, Slowly add 1.2 milliliters of concentrated HBr through the open top of the condenser. If you don't have the 5 milliliter micro pipette, you can, instead, use the 100 to 1000 microliter pipette. You will need to pipette twice, each time transferring 0.6 milliliters of concentrated HBr to the flask. If HBr sticks to the wall of the condenser, rinse it with a small amount of ethanol. You may observe a small amount of the starting material precipitate out from the solvent as a result. Don't worry, since trans stilbene will be redissolved as the reaction proceeds. Next, you will need to change the tip of the micro pipette. Then use it to add 0.8 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide dropwise through the open top of the reflux condenser. Rinse the condenser again with ethanol to wash down any hydrogen peroxide sticking to the walls. Make sure to note any color change in your lab notebook. Stir the reaction under reflux for 20 minutes. You should carefully observe and record any physical changes, including changes in color, precipitate, etc. After 20 minutes of reflux, remove the flask from the hot water bath. Allow the reaction flask to cool down to room temperature. Part B, isolation of brominated product. Once the flask reaches room temperature, you can begin the neutralization of excess HBr. To do so, adjust the pH of your mixture to around five to seven by continuously adding saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and checking with pH paper. Make sure you record the amount of saturated sodium bicarbonate that you use to neutralize the mixture. After neutralization, place the flask in an ice bath to maximize product isolation. 
Then, isolate the crude solid product via vacuum filtration, rinsing the reaction flask two to three times with cold water. Wash the isolated product with a small amount of ice-cold ethanol. Continue to draw air through the product to facilitate drying. Once the product is weighed to a constant mass, calculate the percent yield and record the values in your lab notebook. Part C, analysis of brominated product. You will use TLC to analyze the product. You may want to check this video here for a more detailed look on this technique. Dissolve a tiny bit of the starting material and product, only the tip of a small spatula, in about one milliliter ethanol in two separate labeled test tubes. Spot your samples on a TLC plate. Then, transfer your elutant, in this case, 10 milliliters of 19 to 1 hexanes to ethyl acetate to a dry beaker. Place your spotted TLC plate inside the beaker using tweezers and cover the beaker with aluminum foil. Once the plate develops, you can visualize the plate under UV light. Sketch the plate in your lab notebook and calculate the RF values. Always record and report RF values with solvent used for developing the TLC plate. Finally, dip the developed plate in the KMNO4 solution provided. Permanganate will oxidize any still bean on the plate as evidenced by a yellow spot on the plate. This will help to determine if any of the starting materials remain in your product. Don't forget to also take an IR and an NMR of your product. Put the salt in my water